today we will be talking about protective DNS, new assets on the internet, how they are related to protective DNS, cloud-based solution for protective DNS, and whether or not you can build your own protective DNS solution on-prem with your own skills. First of all, what is protective DNS? There are so many definitions, but in fact, protective DNS is an umbrella term for those security solutions that examine your DNS queries and implement safeguards to prevent you, your users, and your system from accessing malicious destinations on the internet. Talking about malicious destinations, so malicious assets on the internet, there have been many studies done that demonstrated that from 60 to 80% chance, new items, new assets on the internet are not safe to deal with. On the left side, you see newly observed domains as we see it at far side in real time. Newly observed domain is a domain which we have not seen since we started our observations back in 2010 with around and plus 500 sensors all across the globe. So we have never seen the domains which are flying on the screen. But not only we observe them, we also keep them in our database called DNSDB. What I just started on my screen is the DNSDB Scout, a graphical interface to that database. And I will demonstrate that that domain, which is still on the screen, is being already placed in the database. Let's try another one. By the way, what you see on the screen, it seems as some kind of DGA algorithm for some technology. Could be a botnet. So obviously that may not necessarily be very, very, uh, uh, safe to, to access. Let's try another domain here. Yes, we do have it. We have a records for that domains. And as you can see, it is quite a recent one. Now, let's take yet another domain just to make sure that it is consistent with what I am saying. Yes, we do have. Now, because a lot of studies tell us that newly observed or newly created asset on the internet is not safe to access, let's say if public cloud-based DNS solutions would deny access to that asset. When I say deny means whether or not they would be able to resolve it. It's such happened that what we see on the screen is something like a DGA, domain generation algorithm. What it means is it's not necessarily those assets would be resolved to any host. Oh, we are a little bit lucky here. Let's see if that one has anything. We will try. So what I'm doing now is I'm doing an NS lookup with the dig command for that specific domain at randomly chosen uh, publicly available uh, DNS. Oh, I know that Dyn uh, potentially has protective solutions. So what I do now, I will take Dyn DNS and I will query that one. Oh, we see that 
not maybe even 30 seconds passed since I resolved this domain, since we observed at far side this domain, and that domain already has a host to access to. Let's see whether other publicly available uh, cloud-based DNS solutions um, would have it. Which one? Let's say OpenDNS. Or let's say Norton. I choose Norton in this case. Norton has a resolution. What else I can take? Let's say New Star. Does New Star has any knowledge about goodness or badness of this domain at this point of time? Well, it is being resolved. But if I use this domain name servers as my DNS, I would not necessarily be protected in case that specific domain, that specific domain is malicious. So let's try another one, which was quad nine. See, same thing. So what I have tried, I tried many different publicly available DNS servers, which do I know they do offer some security protection. And all of them has resolved this uh, name, which we saw uh, on the screen. But we also know that with almost or up to 80% of chance, this asset may not be safe to deal with. Look at the name, Yoshi 2021-0826. This is today. We don't know what the reason for this to create this uh, uh, asset, and we don't know whether it's good or bad. To understand its behavior, it would take some time what you will do in between. Well, if you just block this in bulk, assuming that they're not good for some period of time, you would protect yourself between this asset appears on the internet and the time other security solutions would classify that and deny access to it. Is it possible? Well, it is. At home, I run two DNS servers. One is being, uh, one is being run under IOC to RPZ management interface. And another one is being run under PyHole management. So two different bind servers, DNS servers. And both have this feed as an RPZ zone. RPZ is response policy zone with the rule to deny. So that is given parameter, meaning I will use what Farsight security recommends me to do by default. And by default, it would be respond with not existing domain. So if I try to resolve this domain, this domain, which was resolved by many different publicly available servers, by any of my home DNS, which is 192.168.8.100. This is what you see in here. I will receive nothing. So my DNS will not give me any IP for that host. So therefore, neither my systems nor my people, my family would be able to access that resource for 24 hours. Let's try my other DNS, which is being run under PyHole. So that would be 192.168.1.1.1, as you can see in this URL. And 
it has to be the same. And next domain. Okay, so let's try anything which you see on the screen. Dig. And because uh, either of these two is my default DNS, I don't know which one is being uh, accessed at the moment or queried at the moment, but what I do know with high level of confidence that the new uh, asset which I see flying, being absorbed on the internet, my system or my family would not be able to access for 24 hours. Just remember, these two web server, these two DNS servers, these two DNS servers are run on Raspberry Pi. That means they are not very demanding to resources for my household. And as you can see on statistics here, I have six clients, 30,000 uh, queries, 5% and half were blocked. This, uh, that many were uh, block listed. When we talk about dashboard on RP, uh, uh, RPI DNS, which is IUC, we have also very similar statistics. Let's try again, because oh, I think it's quite cool to observe that I am being protected in real time. If I can do it on Raspberry Pi, you can do it too. And if you run a small business, then almost any available hardware would be able to accommodate your needs. If you run large enterprise, obviously you would be able to uh, run it as well, perhaps on different hardware, under different management system, or maybe you can even use some commercially available vendors which would accept feeds like this about newly uh, absorbed items on the internet and protect yourself and your business with the high level of confidence. Between the time a new asset appears on the internet and the time other defenses would be able to deal with this with confidence.